guys. Welcome to another All Base Creations Effects Tutorials, Demos, and Review. Today we're going to be going over the reverbs in the Zoom MS60B multi stomp pedal. This red pedal here. It's actually one of my favorite pedals. Um, it's a very versatile pedal to be so small, but one thing that isn't talked about as much is the delays, the reverbs, the just the plethora of effects that's available in that one unit and it's amazing so let's look at it um we we'll start with just my this is just my bassist tone So now we'll kick on a little bit of reverb. Um, we'll start with the HD Hall reverb. So, it's a great um, reverb, one of my favorites. Um, does take quite a bit of processing power um, compared to some of the other ones, but it also has a, a much greater definition to it. So, let's take a look here. We got, um, that setting was the pre-delay 81, decay 45, mix 33, um, low dampening, um, would be 32, high dampening would be 70. The tail was off, but if you need it to stay on, you know, you just turn it on. So. So it can get to be a pretty long reverb. That's just the reverb. If you added a little delay to that, you start almost getting into that pad territory. This is just a simple tape echo.
You see, it's almost like it adds a whole pad territory. If you were to add something like the pitch delay, maybe seven. that to like a nice delay um you know a nice ice delay something like that pitch delay modulation delay or into this hd hall you know really opens it up and what i did there i turned the pre-delay all the way down the decay to 76 the mix was actually about 70 and um i kept the low dampening at 32 high dampening at 70 but let's see. So as you can hear, it definitely can add a ton. If you were to add something like, well, we're not going to get into that because we got a lot of these. But you can add something like the key nine and you got a whole, you know, thing. But we'll do that another time. Let's move on to the HD verb. This is um, probably my favorite, um, just regular reverb on here. So 
mm-hmm. this would be like my just general setting for it. And so like the decay is set to 45, tone is set to 7, mix is set to 16, pre-delay is set to 54, um, HPF is set to 7, level is 100, and the tail is off. So, So, you know, you can set that decay a little lower. So it definitely, definitely has a beautiful characteristics to it that you could definitely use for various reasons. So like, you know, that was a little bit more of a slap and pop, I guess, if you want to put it in a room for whatever reason. Um, Decay was set to 19, tone was set to 7, mix was set to 7. Um, Pre-delay um, is 54, HPF is 7, level 100, and tail is off. But... Yeah, for solo stuff, this is definitely one of the best ones. Even when you add that uh same ice delay in there. You can add a really long decay to this too. That's crazy. All the way up. We could change the tone.
So it, it it's very versatile, you know, you add a little bit crusher in there. Add a nice modulation in there, something like that. Mm. A nice chorus in there. Or even flanger. Let's see what this flanger. <laughs> simply go in here you can go to dynamics and add you in a slow attack and pretty much that whole sound with the exception of, I do have the OC5 on the OC5 is running in poly mode, so it's only, um, you can see the settings there. But um, I have it set so it's not affecting all the notes, just the um, lower notes. So, down bottom. You see how when you start adding stuff like that together, it really starts to open up. I actually have an octave setup, octave down setting set up in here already. So if I take that setting, Mind you, all this is just the MS60B. I have, I give you my settings that I just did for that patch. So I got a bass octave. That's the first thing running. Octave um, down is set to 80. Dry is set to 100. Tone is set to zero. Lows is set to seven. Mids is set to three. Level is set to 56. because I'm going to turn all this off and I'm going to turn that off right now. And then I got the slow attack on 21, the curve set to 10, the level set to 100. And on the ice delay, ice delay, <coughs> time is set to 500, feedback is set to 64, mix is set to 60. The interval is set to an octave, the slice is set to long, um, blend is set to 11. The schmear is set to 7, um, damp is set to 2, HPF is set to 20, and on the HD reverb, which is the main star of it, you know, today, is the decay is 78, tone is 4, the mix is 27, the pre-delay is 54, HPF is 7, the level is 100, and the tail is off. But again, 
Let's move on. So now we got the regular hall delay. I mean hall reverb, I'm sorry. And this one is is it's it's still a hall um reverb, it's just um less process intensive i guess so it's not as detailed as the other one but sometimes you don't need them super detailed you know high definition reverb if you're not like recording you're just doing something live you just need a reverb so here's a nice hall reverb So you can see it, it's not too far off from the HD one. It's just it's just using like a third of the processing power. And this is important when you're using like the B6 or you're using the B3, B3N. Um, different, um, that reverb being the Hall one versus the HD Hall one can mean the difference between using an extra two effects versus an extra one effect or something like that. So, you know, it might limit the processing power to um, you only using five or four effects if you're using the B6, you know. So it's one of the reasons why even on the B6, um, a lot of times I'll just use the room delay instead of using the HD delay. I mean, I keep saying delay. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I mean, reverb. I don't know why I keep saying delay. I mean, reverb. Um I use the hall, the room reverb on the B6, same thing, um, same thing on the B3, same thing on the MS50G. Um, Using the regular hall one versus the HD hall reverbs will save you processing power. So they probably use about, let me see, on here, I can give you an exact number on it. So on the B6, the room is only using 13, but the hall, the HD hall reverb is using 42% of the processing power just to use the HD hall reverb, which is crazy. You know, so that's a way you can fit in more effects without, um, you know, sacrificing, um, everything you want you just won't get as high of a definition of it you know so the settings for that was the decay is on 10 the tone is on 5 the mix is on 46 um the pre-delay is 49 the level is 100 and another little feature i love about the um um zoom ms 50 i mean ms 60b is that as you're trying out effects, the reason why I can set all these up, before I start recording, I went through all the reverbs and just got um, some different settings set up. And it allows you, it won't save them all, um, like to the patch, but as you're auditioning them and going and flipping back and forth, it saves them long enough for you to, um, you know, try out different ones versus other ones. So if I wanted to try out the hall one, um, HD hall one versus that one, I can just flip right back and it'll be back to my settings. Then the same thing when I switch back to the regular hall one, it allows me to flip back and forth without having to, you know, it erasing my settings every single time. But if I switch patches, now it would, it would erase all those extra settings. But if I'm working within that patch, it saves it 
and it doesn't make me have to set things back up every single time. So that's that's also a cool little feature they added in that they don't really talk about. So, again, my settings for the hall one was decay is 10, tone 5, mix 46, pre-delay is 49, levels 100, tail was off. Now we're going to do the room, room reverb. So that's the room reverb. This one, the decay is set to 10, tone is set to 8, mix is set to 60, pre delay is set to 5, and level is set to 100. But I typically wouldn't have that mix that high. I just kind of did that to exaggerate so you could hear it a little better. But I typically would mix my reverbs for like solo stuff. If I'm going to be playing chordal things or tapping, I'm going to set the reverb to probably around um, 8 to 10 percent. I use this room, um, this room one for on the B6. I use that after my IR, after my limiter and my IR. That way it puts it in, makes it sound like it's in the room. You know? And as you can see, it's not, it's not super noticeable like that, you know, but it, if you take it off, so. So it's just very, very subtle when you do it like that, but if you, you know, yeah, if you crank it up. So, you know, if you kind of keep the room decay down and have it at a lower setting, it just adds just a touch of, like, air to, the, you know, the sound, where if you're wearing in-ears, it doesn't sound like it's just right there up on you. I don't really like when... I wear the in ears. Even when I have my IR set up, I still, when I'm just doing live stuff, I like to have just a little bit of room reverb on there just to not make it sound so right in my ear, you know. And it definitely, for me, it, it allows it to sit better in the mix as I'm um, mixing on the little IR consoles and stuff. Not IR console, in ear monitor consoles and stuff. It's an IR, that's impulse responses, but. Um, um, IEM in ear monitors, but here we go. Next one, you got the tiled room. <laughs> I really do use these um, certain ones like tiled and the room ones like a um, almost like room mics for a bass cabinet. So if I'm running the IRs, I really do like to have them. Um, I'm not going to show you guys on the B6 today, but that's what I would, you know, different things like that. I like to have on after my IRs and stuff. Definitely try it out. And it definitely I use it as the last thing and very last thing in my chain before I send the signal out to my um, 
if I'm to the house. But just a little smidge, like eight percent, eight percent fine. You know, you don't even might not even need ten. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little bit, just to add a little character, a little, a little bit of the room, make it sound like it's being mic'd in the room. You know, I you use a combination of little tricks like that. And I actually got that from the software Amplitude. Amplitude allows you to have two, um, you can run a DI, two mics, and um, two mics, and two room mics, two stereo room mics. And changing the rooms just makes a huge difference. And then on top of that, you can have two cabinets running. You can have up to three or four if you got the, you know, the bigger version, but I didn't buy all that. I don't, I don't need all that. I just ran in the Ampegs, both of the Ampeg um, SVT ones. But. So as you can see, it definitely adds, <clears throat> definitely adds my settings right there where the decay is 20, tone is 4, mix is 37, pre-delay is set to 10, level is set to 100, and tail is off. But if you pull that pre-delay up, it gives you a lot more time with the dry signal by itself. Just adding that pre-delay, I turned the pre-delay all the way up to 100, just to do an example of if you really want that dry signal to come through first, versus it sounded like it's all like the reverb is all on on from the very first thing, you know. I like personally when it when it comes in a little later, but if I turn the pre-delay all the way off. definitely gets a chance to cut through.
So we'll move on from there. I think that's good enough on that. I really like that tile one. This is the spring reverb. This is like a um like a old amp a spring reverb. These had these little boxes in them with springs in them. So I just turned on the smooth delay there, um, but just to add out a little fill, fill it out a little bit, you know, and this is like a classic guitar reverb type thing, you know. So it has a nice sound to it, definitely. Um, you know, sometimes you don't always want to use the same reverb for everything. You know, that's why it's good to have options like this. This is why I love that they included all these. They just went ahead and released them in the version two and added all of those. So I definitely appreciate y'all for that Zoom. Uh, all right, we got the uh, arena reverb. Something like this, definitely you want to have some type of, you know, um, delay on there. Let's try the lo-fi.
Yeah, so, and unlike for guitar, I find it is better to mostly have that delay into reverb. But for bass, you can really just run reverb most of the time if you just want a little bit of that space to your sound. Um, you know, you don't even have to have it that high. That's pretty high. You know, that's 56. Let's turn it down to 16. So with something like the arena reverb, you know, it definitely has enough like sustain to it where you, you know, you don't, it already sounds like it has like some delay in there naturally, you know. So, so settings is decay 15, tone 7. The mix right there was 16. I had it set to 56. And the pre-delay is set to 90. And the level is set to 100. Of course, you turn that pre-delay down. And then you... So, you know, you get a lot of a lot of um space out of this one. You know, cuz it's supposed to be an arena like you're playing in an arena. So, you know, if you're going for a bigger reverb sound, that's definitely the one. This is the early reflection. So if you just want that little bit of like reverb, you know, early reflection type sound, like it, it's, it's not going to sound like a whole reverb, so it doesn't give you the sustain. It just gives you the front part of it.
So, right there, I had it set to the decay is 15, the shape is 10, the mix is 15, the tone is 6, and the level set to 100, tail is off. So, let's go ahead and move on. That one's pretty, you know. Let me just do something real quick. So I'm guessing it has some type of phase inversion or something with the shape. So it has a positive 0 through 10 and a negative 0, I mean, negative 1 through 10 as well. So, um, you know, that's something else you can play around with. And the negative one sounds like it's like in reverse almost. But next up we have air. Air reverb. So, it just adds like a very little smidge, just a little bit to it, you know. Nothing too much. Even when you turn it all the way up, it's not adding too much. I mean... <laughs> So it has like a little weird, almost like chorus effect without being a chorus effect. It's weird. But uh, let's put it around 32%. So you can definitely hear it. Um, let's turn this room size up. like a really clear chorus effect to it when 
you turn it all the way up and the room size to 18, tone to 10, mix on 100, um, reflection on 6. turn the reflection all the way off it really gets a, a different type of sound it actually thickens up the sound So, so that one could be used for, you know, just adding a little seasoning to your sound. Let's move on to the plate reverb. That's almost like a string effect. That's crazy. All I did was turn the mix all the way up. Pre-delay is on 30. Decay is on 52. Um, colors on 58. Um, low dampening is on 97. High dampening is on 95. Tail is off. Levels 100. But check that. I did there <clears throat> let's go back see we got pre-delay 30 decay 52 mix on 100 color on 56 low um low dampening 97 high dampening 95 tails off and that's on the plate reverb ice delay settings is 500 feet on um, time 
times 500 feedback is 64. Mix is 60. Um, interval set to octave up. Slice long. Blend 11. Smear is 7. Damp is um, 2. High pass filter is 20. It's on the ice delay. Now on the slow attack, same settings as before. 21 for the time. Curve is 10. Level is 100. And then bam, you got to... That's nice. And that's all out of the MS60B. You ain't even have to add. See, a lot of times people, they not, they're not, they not um, experimenting enough. I never knew that that plate reverb can do that until I got on here um, working with you all, you know, going through it some more. And it's like, okay, bam, you could turn that up with that ice delay. See what it sound like with the octave down in there. Beautiful way to do intros and stuff like that. And that's the same um, bass um, octave on the MS60B. Octave 80, dry is 100, tone is 0. Low is 70, mid is 3. Level is 56. So, oh, that's crazy that you could just do all that with that one little small unit. It's four effects, you know, 
Nothing crazy. I'm sure with, um, you know, an HX stomp, they have similar effects. You know, something might be, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of Line 6. Maybe Line 6 can send me some or do something about that. But until then, I ain't. I know they ain't worried about me, so I ain't really worried about them. But Zoom, I love their stuff. Um, I already use their stuff. And, no, they haven't paid me to do anything either. But I like their stuff, so I'm just going to talk about it. <laughs> and, you know, plus this stuff is impressive. That is impressive for a one. This is taking up the same space as a baseball's MXR uh Base envelope filter, a uh, poly blue octave, a OC5. It's not taking up the space of like the SGT, or it's not even taking up the space of the AG preamp. You know, it's a very small unit. It's smaller than the Key 9 and all those units. Um, only one on my pedal board that's really that much smaller than it. Um, of course, the poly blue is a little slightly smaller. But the Spectra Comp is the only thing smaller on my pedal board. And this little unit just has so many options and effects. We ain't even get into the amps. They got decent amp models on there, for real, for real. Decent amp, especially the amp preamps. If you just turn the um, cabinets off, you can get pretty much the Eden on here on this MS60B. Sounds very similar to that WTDI world uh, um, pedal. So if you can't. You don't have the budget to get both. I would just say get the MS60B, um, go to the Eden joint on there, and you know do your thing. So let me see. Dang, I really like that sound though. If you wanted to move faster, another tip would be to just change the time on the. And you could change the curb if you want it to curve, if you want it to, um, you know, rise differently. You know, sometimes it it could rise like that. So you got two different ways of looking at it. You can have it go like a straight, like bam. You can have it go bam. You know, well, I, I can't do this with this stupid thing. Let me do this hand. So you can have it go just straight up. You can have it go to the side. You can have it do like a weird curve. You know, it could go up and over, you know, it just depends on the curve you choose. just my bass and running into the ms60b um i do have my usual like i said um preamp on i got my aguilar preamp on so because it's nice clean preamp so it's, it's pretty much as clean of a sound as i would need coming out of there but it does have the bright on a little bit of um some bass added and some high mids added there you know just to you know, clarify, you know, uh, let me see. Let me just turn off everything. You can hear what that sound like with just that unit. So when I turn everything else back on, so it adds 
just a lot of clarity and things like that. So, but you know, um, pretty much you can expect most of the work is doing coming from here. You can run it into an EQ or something like that or whatever, um, you know, other effects pedals you may have that will boost your signal or, you know, things like that. But for the most part, you could really just use that as a stereo um, unit by itself, just the MS-60B, and have all these preset. That would be a patch. You know, any, any of these other patches that I'm giving you will be different patches. And then you just click, you set them in alphabetical order in the way you need them. You just click through them. You know, when you go, you just go to the menu, press the middle button until you get to the memory slots. And then you just would be pressing the foot switch button in the middle with your foot and flipping through preset settings, ideally during the show. Which makes the unit so powerful. You don't want to be fiddling around like this, having to press these little buttons and stuff during the show. Nah, what you would do is you would set up different patches that, that had that exact setting that you wanted to be able to use, you know, all the combinations that you wanted to use in that setting, that preset. Because fiddling around on stage, man, don't, don't, don't lose your job fiddling around with no pedals, man. People, people would much rather you came in on time and, and hit the part the right way with just your dry bass, then you have some filling around with some stupid effects pedals, and and you missed everything. You know, you missed all the hits, you missed the whole, all the chord changes, all the roots, everything. You're trying to fill around with some effects pedals. You know, first thing first, this is a bass. This is a bass. You know, so you got to play bass more than anything. But let's go on to mod reverb. You know, and that's probably why a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, I don't be pressed to just play bass stuff. I be doing all types of chord and stuff and stuff because, I mean, when I go on a gig, I have to just play bass and be doing that all the time for the rest of my life. So you got plenty of opportunities to hear me just play bass, people. guys i'm gonna be back with a part two just give me a minute i'm gonna fix the sound and i'll be back peace 